Okay, so someone's asked me a very valid question. Um, last year I posted a video explaining uh, an easy way of getting MP3 files into, well, an easy and cheap way of getting MP3 files into a uh, standard Sinclair Spectrum. And that involved using a small, readily available amplifier board. Uh, but I never actually explained any sort of like technical details as to how it actually did it and what I actually used. Well, this is the amplifier board that I used, which I paid £2.95 for. And it has three connections to the spectrum. One, two, three. And the other two connections go to a headphone cable, which then plugs into the MP3 player. Uh, now, the job of the amplifier board is to convert the relatively low power output of the uh, MP3 player into the much more powerful output that was typical of a 1970s, 1980s mono cassette player uh, and which the Spectrum is actually expecting to receive. And as we can see, it's, it's working, it's, it's currently loading up as we speak. Um, so what I'll let it do is I'll let it finish loading and then um, and then I'll show you exactly how I wired it in and what exactly that board is. Okay, so now we've got the little board out of our spectrum, maybe things will be a little bit easier. Okay, so as I spend, um, there's only three wires going into the spectrum. There's the power goes to the power plug and there's a third wire which goes to the earphone input pin um, on the spectrum. Uh, the other two wires uh, go through uh, a little bit of a um, solder joint so that it can go to the mp3 player. So just to um, explain what's going on here, uh, the, the mp3 player is obviously stereo but um, the, um, the spectrum is mono so basically I'm just discarding one channel. So coming out of here, I think there was a red, a white, and a, and a, and a shielded earth. And uh, I've just counted one of the channels, let's say the red channel, and then connected the, the, um, the shield and the remaining channel to the two uh, in audio input pins which are on this board in the center there. Okay, uh, also on this side there's a pin here, ground, which goes to um, this pin location here, which is the, um, the uh, center pin on the uh, power plug, and then the positive um, voltage, which is the, um, the outside of the connector, then goes to uh, the VCC input of the audio board. These audio boards uh, I think take between 9 and 12 volts, Spectrum's 9 volts, so it's relatively straightforward. Now on the other side here, there's the um, speaker output. The speaker output's actually output and ground. We've already got a ground anywhere here, so therefore I'm only using a single wire, which goes to the audio input pin on the earphone socket, the Spectrum. And that is basically it. And the whole thing... Uh, fits inside the case. Um, now I need to need to do it a bit more professionally than I've done it because this is all very experimental. Um, but um, but it will fit in there quite easily. Okay, so obviously I need to get a bit of a hot glue gun and a little insulator to make it sit in there properly. But um, I haven't got onto it yet. Um, um, but as you can see, everything else, um, power cables just come around the side there. The signal cable just got it dips underneath there. The audio cable that comes from the MP3 player I've just slotted um, through, um, you know, the very wide aperture that's available there. And, um, and as you can see, it all fits quite nicely inside the case. Like I say, the, the, um, the audio cable just hangs out the hole at the back. Um, so I haven't had to damage the case in any way. Okay, I've had to dab a little bit of solder on three of the pads, but there you go. Um, yeah, I'm sure you can make a much better job, but that's what I did and it worked.